عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حي على الصلاة حي على الصلاة حي على الفلاح حي على الفلاح الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله الحمد لله رب العالمين الحمد لله ذي الملك والملكوت ذي العزة والجبروت الحمد لله حي قيوم لا ينام عزيز لا يضام قهار لا يرام وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدًا عبده ورسوله اللهم صلِّ وسلِّم وبارِك على سيدنا محمدٍ وعلى آله وصحبه وسلِّم تسليمًا يقول الباري سبحانه وتعالى بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون Or you who believe fear Allah as he should be feared and they not accept on the state of Islam. For may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the most merciful be so upon as the gift to die on the state of Islam. Amma ba'd. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the ayat of Surah At-Tawbah addressing to the believers with one of the key commands in this ayat, in this surah. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saying, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu, ba'da a'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan rajim, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu, ma lakum idha qila lakum unfiru fi sabiilillahi thaqaltum ila al-arad. O you who believe, O you who believe, what is the matter with you when it has been taught to you to march forth in the sake of Allah, you cling heavily to the earth. You adhere heavily to the earth. And this, subhanAllah, ayah is a key ayah in Surah At-Tawbah. So we have Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanding the believer to march forth on his sake. But there is type of the believer or those who are clinging or like adhering to the earth, which is like they being subjected to the, subhanAllah, the attraction to the gravity of the earth. And then it's like they cannot move. And look, subhanAllah, how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala define it. It's like you can't picture it. It's like someone want to have the intention to really go to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to march forth to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but something is pulling, pulling this person. The clinging to the earth is a natural into the human being. It's a natural in the human being. It's in nature. How is it nature? Because in this clinging to the earth, the person finds, you know, the nafs, the, the inner self, find its rest, its peace, you know, all the desire are kind of, you know, provided, uh, heard, uh, served. But whenever a call comes to stand for a cause in it, someone presume in it that there is like hardship, that there is like sacrifices, that there is like, you know, a lot of struggling. The nafs by his nature repairs from it and rejects it. So when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is addressing to the believer with the command knowing that the nature of the nafs, the nature of the nafs is going to be adhering to the earth. 
want to just you know be always peace passive dormant but here the thing is not any call that is calling them is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala calling them and calling them to march in his sake subhanahu wa ta'ala therefore here if they don't do it it is in actually in fact is a disobedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and this is the ayah the reason of the revelation of the air that some of those who have been you know taking their time to join the Prophet in the expedition of Tabuk. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala kind of uh, severely reproach them by just taking their time and not hasten to join the Prophet. And this is actually which is very important here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then link it to the hijrah. The hijrah that we're going to be having its remembrance starting on the beginning of the Har. So here how to connect the things to make out of the Hijrah, not in the remembrance that an event passed in the life of the Prophet Sallallahu but it's a blessing that we need to reap its blessing today in our life. So when Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala addressed to the believer, is it addressing to us today? Is addressing to us today? It's like people are clinging to the earth. The very issue, big issue of the clinging to the earth is to be like heedless to the point that someone, he built in himself, on herself, there is a certain belief that Allah called in the Quran, Al-Khuludu ila al-Ard. Al-Khuludu ila al-Ard, to feel like, you know, eternity, living for eternity in this earth. You feel like, subhanAllah, is it truly, there is a possibility to live in eternity, despite the fact and the undeniable belief of coming of the coming of the death. But the subhanAllah people, they live their life, they build, they construct, their motivation, their dreams, everything is like they're going to live forever. So, the, the, I will not say the intention, but the belief, the certainty within the inner self, it's like this earth is forever. So, the fact to cling heavily to the earth, the way that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala explains, is going to lead to this type of belief. And the belief that not, not really subhanAllah, someone is believed in it, but he act upon it. So it becomes that like the true belief, why he's acting upon it, while the, his true belief that he believe in, he's not acting upon it. And this is subhanAllah, the dilemma and the contradiction. So when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, you know, march forth, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reproached the believers, this is a disobedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But the thing is, it's not any disobedience. It's not like a small sin. So if you're going to evaluate this disobedience, this not... Uh, joining the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not fulfilling the order of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the, in, the, in the good manner in the way that someone Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be pleased to you to hasten to to feel it yourself driven toward it how big is this sin? this sin is very big why? because the fact to cling to the earth and not really hasten and answer the call of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala means like the person is satisfied for the truth to not be established he's satisfied for the justice to not be established he's satisfied that is okay for mischief to be continuing spreading all over he's satisfied by the existence of injustice and oppression on earth he's fully satisfied so nothing is moving him this person, he's ending up by dead and dead in the heart. And this is the issue. This is the big issue. So it's a very big sin. And you understand the size of the sin as a major sin to not really move and not really have oneself to really go and march in the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You can understand it as I have explained it in the next ayah because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, illa tanfiru. If you do not march forth, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will cause you to taste the grievous penalty. It's a big chastisement that will be touching those who, who left behind or they, they, they declined or they didn't answer the call of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And indeed, in answering the call of Allah is what gives you life. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in Surah Al-Anfal, Ya ayyu al-ladhina amanu stajibu lillahi wa rasul Stajibu answer the call of Allah and his messenger when they call you to what gives you life therefore the call of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to march in his sake it is a call to honor yourself is a call to dignify yourself is a call to elevate yourself is a call to purify yourself is a call to give yourself you know to help yourself being purified because the fact to not act and to not be active and to not listen and to not go forth, 
that's the situation subhanallah is like someone does not have life inside him does not have life inside him therefore it becomes for the believer this ayah for us this ayah when you read it today it's not addressed to the believers only or Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but as a matter of fact this ayah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said said oh you will believe when most of the believers they joined of the prophet joined the prophet sallallahu actually three only of the believers that they didn't join and they came to the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and they said the truth the rest of them they were hypocrites hypocrites they didn't even intend from the beginning but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is addressing in this ayah which is concern you as it concerned the believer at that time in the first generation companion of the Prophet وسلم, as it concerned us today so it is a fact and the reality that the believer need to check himself so you are between two situations a situation where clinging to the earth by letting yourself to be satisfying his desire then you're going to end up dead in the heart or you're going to move and you have that subhanallah that high spirit to help you motivated and driven toward fulfilling the order of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he's saying the fulfilling the order of Allah it was very difficult in the time of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam to leave your home to leave your family and to join the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam in expedition that you don't know if you're going to come back or not but here subhanallah today here we're going to talk and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to do the basic of your deed to just be someone who want to honor himself by purifying himself and be close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala therefore the action the action of answering the call of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by making marching toward him in, in a way that you hasten in fulfilling his order this is called hijrah this is the hijrah so when we're talking about the hijrah of the prophet وسلم, the migration of the prophet وسلم, from mecca to medina this is for us what it need to be meaning because we do not look at the hijrah as a past event in a history just to remember it as the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam went from mecca to medina and the companion the ansar they welcomed him with the with a very beautiful welcome tala al badru alayna that's not the hijrah that we need to reflect on when you live your life in such society that's for you to read it to enjoy it but what are truly the lesson that you need to bring today in your life when you look at the hijrah so you see here allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when he mentioned for us such a thing it really need to to really concern you now i said the hijrah it is to answer the call of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by marching forth to hell and hasten in the best of your ability to fulfill his order subhanahu wa ta'ala why we call it the hijrah because the hijrah indeed is to move from place to place or to move from a state of spirit to a state of spirit from a state of mind to a state of mind from a state where someone is clinging to the earth having the self to serve its own self to be serving their desire to a situation when you go to deprive that self from their low desire because you're seeking something great high and the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam taught you to ask for the highest of paradise so he taught you to not be restricted to just be a believer or a muslim that you do like the few prayer if you remember them and then you think that someone is like asking for firdaus al-a'la if allah the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam taught you to ask for the highest of paradise which is mean you have to follow his way by marching forth toward him subhanahu wa ta'ala by elevating the quality of your action by elevating the quality that you seek in with an honor and do not seek the honor in this worldly life because allah subhanahu wa ta'ala qala araditum bil hayat dunya are you pleased with the worldly life then the akhirah what the worldly life compared to the akhirah the enjoyment of the, to the worldly life compared to the compared to the akhirah, akhirah is insignificant is insignificant therefore when someone has the true sincerity the sincerity the devotion the caring to truly march to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala look what allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will provide for you allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will support you allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will protect you from any type of enemy you know regardless of their number regardless of what they subhanallah they prepared allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will protect you allah subhanahu wa ta'ala after protecting you allah will save you and protect you and help you and support you in any place that you might be and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala furthermore he will make you joyful happy and bring tranquility in your heart all this 
when you keep yourself moving forward toward Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in an action of hijrah, in an action of hijrah. And as a matter of fact, what I have told you, this is exactly what the, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did to his Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa Where? In the hijrah. Where? In the hijrah. When he was in the cave with Abi Bakr radiallahu ta'ala anhu, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, illa tansuru. It's like you think that the question that you join him, that you're going to give him victory and triumph and help and support, is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will help his, his Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa He's not in need of any one of us. That's why قال إلا تنفير يعذبكم عذابا أليما الله سبحانه وتعالى will سبحان inflict on you a very grievous penalty. Then قال يستبدل قوما غيركم. He'll bring other people to give them the opportunity and to give them this opportunity to dignify and honor themselves. قال إلا تنفير يعذبكم عذابا أليما ويستبدل قوما غيركم ولا تضروا شيئا. You do not have any way to harm Allah سبحانه وتعالى. Therefore. When you think of it, when you think of it, this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will provide you, will shower you, will give you if you come sincerely to Allah and seeking the pleasure of Allah. So seeking the pleasure of Allah, put it in a term of immigrating to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, Allah told us this in Surah Al-Tawbah after addressing to the believer in this very severe reproach. He told them, Indeed, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have supported him, had aided him subhanahu wa ta'ala. Qala id akhrajahu alladhina kafaru, id akhrajahu alladhina kafaru thani athnayn. When the disbeliever, they had driven him out from Mecca, one of two. So this is one of two, is to tell you first that there were only two. Which is mean that he didn't have the ability to fight. They didn't have the ability to face any army. They didn't have even the ability to face a small group of people. They were, subhanAllah, chased by the whole people of Mecca, all the disbelievers. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala qala thani athnayn. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he supported and helped his Prophet alayhi sallallahu alayhi wasallam and Abi Bakr, there were only two. And two, whatever place you said, you'll be Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will help you. They were in a cave, in a very small cave. And the enemy, they stopped at the entrance of the cave. As Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala an said, if they just looked at their toes, they would have seen us. But however, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala spread the mercy in this small cave. And expanded their chest. And he had the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to have descending on his tranquility. And he said, yeah, Abu Bakr, in a very comfort way, in a very subhanallah, in a way of, of an inner joy that is speaking. Qala, يا أبا بكر ما بالك باثنين الله ثالثهما. What do you think of two? Their third is Allah سبحانه وتعالى. إذ يقول لصاحبه لا تحزن إن الله معنا. Behold, he's saying to his to his companion, do not be sad. Allah سبحانه وتعالى is with us. Therefore, if you do your right hijrah to Allah سبحانه وتعالى and you make an an action, the repentance is a hijrah. Forgiveness is a hijrah. Leaving your home to come to the prayer is a hijrah. Leaving your work to come to the Juma is a hijrah. Leaving subhanAllah the state of a sin you struggle against as a bad habit and you want to change it and you want to improve and enhance your, your way to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by a better worship, by you know cleansing, by purifying, by improving the quality of worship is a hijrah. Is a hijrah. Why? Because your direction is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is how you're going to be fulfilling the teaching of the Prophet وسلم, if you ask someone, for example, you have the ability to ask for the greatest investment or for the greatest return on, pro, uh, on investment. Because some people, they will not even have access to such opportunity. So they said, how much I need to invest? He said, no, there is no limit. So you can invest whatever you want. This is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling you. So you can get the al-firdaus al-ana, but where's your word? Where's your action? Where's your azimah? Where's your intention? So when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala telling us that it's like making for us is a configuration of a divine law that applies to you or you believe so look how much Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is dignifying you and helping you and trying subhanahu wa ta'ala to elevate you or willing subhanahu wa ta'ala to elevate you now the 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 beginning of the hijrah or the the, the islamic calendar with the hijrah it really have a great profound wisdom great profound wisdom as Umar radiallahu ta'ala anha helped us to understand how profound 
knowledge that they had the, the companion of the one Allah Ta'ala Ali. So Umar, he's the one who had the, in his time, in the year 17 of the Hijrah, they started the Hijri calendar. It started by, uh, it mentioned al-Sha'bi in al-Hakim. He said that Abu Musa al-Ash'ari, qala, ya, he addressed to uh, Amir al-Mu'mineen, Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu, the presence of the believer, qala, ya'tina minka kutubun la tarikha fiha. We receive from you letters, messages, books, does not have any dates. And it's also been narrated that someone bring, brought, you know, a, a document which it has a death. And he said the death, the, uh, the due date is Sha'ban. So he's like asking for his death. He told him Sha'ban, which Sha'ban? For this year, last year, or the next year? So Umar radiallahu ta'ala an brought back, brought, you know, uh, the, the believers all together to meet and to ponder and to find a solution how to start or what we need to use to have this uh, Hijri or the calendar, the new Islamic calendar. Some of the believers, they said, we started with the birth of the Prophet ﷺ. Others, they said, with the advent of the prophethood, when he became prophet, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed to him the Qur'an. The other, they say, the Hijrah. Umar radiallahu ta'ala said the Hijrah, and it be the Hijrah. And then Umar gave the reason, alayhi uh, radiallahu ta'ala what was the reason? Qala dhali tilka Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala farraqa bayna al-haqq wal The Hijrah is like that line of demarcation, the separation between the falsehood and the truth. Between the falsehood and the truth. And this is how profound it is. So when you think about it, why it was not the, the prophethood, the beginning of the prophethood of the Prophet sallallahu why it was not the birth of the Prophet If you think about it, the birth of the Prophet sallallahu is a mercy to us from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as well as the beginning of the prophethood. But it cannot be really as the beginning of the calendar because there is something, you know, profound here. Because if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give you rahmah or someone give you a gift to help you, that gift will not be truly helpful if you do not use it. So when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala telling you, this is your gift to you, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa and this is the gift to you, the Qur'an, you will only be beneficial because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, قُلْ بِفَضِّ اللَّهِ وَبِرَحْمَتِهِ Say with the bounty of Allah and His mercy that the believer should be rejoicing more than they are accumulating or everyone actually who is being given the gift. So the rahmat will not have any sense into you till you soak it in your heart and you to translate it into action and you translate it into conduct and you translate it into behavior. So when Umar radiallahu ta'ala an, he said, we start from the hijrah, this is when the empowerment and the establishment of the truth started because this is the group of the Muslim, they come together in one masjid praying to Allah come together to establish the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And for this reason, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, after the hijrah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promised the believers among you and those who do good, that he will give them succession to authority as he did for the, for the generation or the people before. He'll empower for them and establish for them their religion, their deen that he has chosen for them. And he will change, replace their fear into security. So this is in Medin. So you see the way how the hijrah transformed even the selves, transformed even the soul. Why? Because the rahmah that is being given to us by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if you do not invest it into you, then it's not going to change. So this is one of the great reminder and one of the great wisdom to understand why it started we, with the, uh, the, 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 the hijrah. So to the hijrah, to remind ourselves about how do you need, I mean, you need to move from the clinging state to the earth to marching forth Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala state. And it is a necessity and it's not an option. Some people, they say, oh, you do that jihad to read, you know, to reach higher rank. No, if you don't do it, you're going to die. Literally, you're going to die. As we're going to explain it very shortly and in a concise way. So here, 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when He's telling you such a thing, you think of yourself. I say, okay, I mean, I'm in a situation in a society that is really, there's a lot of distraction, there's a lot of entertaining, entertainment, there's the social media and everything. And when you're thinking about the hijrah, as we said, if it was like for the Prophet Sallallahu is our rahmah, you make salat on the Prophet Sallallahu that is not going to help you in your life. You're going to make dhikr of Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala remembers, but it's not going to change you. You're going to make a few salat, but it's not going to change you. As long as this rahmah, as this rahmah, you didn't bring it within yourself. So it's going to govern the self that you have. Then when you're thinking about the Prophet, when he says, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, after you have fulfilled and you did everything that he asked you. So when you make the salah, it's going to be very powerful salah because you are sending the blessing upon the Prophet ﷺ because he guided you, he helped you, he shown you وسلم, the path. When you come to your salah, it's the same. Therefore, to have been soaked totally, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned this word soaked, by the book, by the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that's how you subhanAllah embrace fully the rahmah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to change and when you change you will have that power into your heart however igniting this willpower to make you help you to be you know driven becomes like a you know a driving force toward the good driving force to help you to march for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it requires subhanAllah a base what is this base and this is subhanAllah the key in all our speech today this is the key the base is for you to love the truth is to love the truth and meaning of the love the truth is not just to love the truth from a distance you love the truth by seeking to establish the truth you love the truth by seeking to stop falsehood you love the truth by seeking to help you know the gesture to be established that's how you love the truth and this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in Surah Al-Anfal after you know less a year less than two years the companion Ridwan Allah Ta'ala they were in Badr and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will from the beginning of the Hijrah for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to establish the truth and to make the falsehood to perish so dear brother respect the sister this is the key if you do not love the truth then naturally you will be clinging to the earth naturally you will be someone heedless naturally you will be a, a number into the society you will be prey to all the marketers you're gonna be a consumer you're gonna be a number a score for the credit you know uh, banks but you are not a believer in the eye of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then clinging to the earth it's naturally in the nature of the human being if you do not bring into your heart the love of the truth in the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that is going to have that willpower to be strengthened in you so you can march forth for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and here after this listen to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala telling you if you do not march into the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he will inflict on you the most grievous penalty that's the meaning of it and why because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala cares about you. In fact, if you let it go, if you let it go, what is going to happen? We're going to come to a point that you will not be able to hear. You're going to come to a point that you will not be able to see. It's going to come to a point that you will not be able even to feel. So when you read the Quran, it does not make anything to you. When you listen to reminder, it does not move you. When you see dead people dying things, it does not mean anything for you. Why? Because you already been adhering to that aqeedah of being living eternity on earth. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned, that person who was follower of Musa alayhi salam, qala walakinnahu akhlada ila al-ard. He really was seeking eternity on earth. He want authority, he want fame, he want power, all of that, subhanAllah, make things someone that he is going to live for eternity. And it's really awkward in the, in, the, in the human being nature. When we live even a short moment of joy, uh, your mind make you think, subhanAllah, it's like this is an eternity. You only see that. And that's why, subhanAllah, the shaitan trick them. Why? Because we human beings, we are very easy to trick. 
If you do not hold fast to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Wallahi, the pious person, the, if, had it not been Allah's grace upon us, we will all go astray. Why? Because we are very easy to be tricked. That's why the closer you are to the book of Allah, the closer you are to the teaching of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you will be saving yourself. You will be honoring yourself. That's why it's a necessity. It's a necessary for us to fight against the clinging to the earth and the adhering to the earth. Why? Because it's going to kill us from inside. And when we're dead inside, we just our God is going to be our desire. Our God is going to be our whims. And then when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put in the seal of a heart of such a people, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help us to not fall into this, into this subhanAllah, uh, very big sin, if you can say, and into this trap of the shaitan to be tricked and help us to be continuing striving for the sake of Allah, truly and sincerely asking Allah for the highest of paradise. بسم الله وكفى والصلاة والسلام على النبي المصطفى أما بعد. In remembrance of the hijrah of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم, the very great part of it is the ayat in Surah At-Tawbah that I have mentioned. In that moment, the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم with Abi Bakr, in that سبحان الله that changing moment, the whole success, the whole prosperity that followed, sorry, that followed. It was its key is over there. Its key is over there. How the Prophet Sallallahu traveled and make all his striving for 13 years to come to that point inside the grave, inside the, the cave. And after that, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala guaranteed for him all the prosperity, all the triumph, all the support. So for us, SubhanAllah, all of us, you have a moment in your life. A moment of your life is like the moment in the cave for the Prophet ﷺ and Abi Bakr. And this is what is going to define your future. If that moment someone is being tricked and will be like adhering to the earth, not caring, it might be subhanAllah the end of that person. But Allah is most merciful. He always help you to come back and repent. However, the true believer, he will not let himself or herself fall onto the, into that trap. Therefore, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he said the hijrah. The hijrah is a common term. The hijrah is not just to take your luggage and go move to another place. The hijrah, as he said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Whoever who, who migrate, immigrate in the sake of Allah, seeking to preserve his deen, seeking to find the place where he truly have that serenity and peace of mind to make you know, his deen. That, subhanAllah, is the community, is the masjid, is the people around to help them really flourish in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala qala, yajid fil ardi muraghaman kathira wa sa'a. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, you have abund abundant convenience and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will provide you with no measure. And he said, whoever leaving his home, muhajiran, immigrating to Allah in his messenger, and he will die. He had secured, Allah had secured his reward. So imagine the hijrah, even when you come into the masjid and something happens, subhanAllah, Allah secure your reward. Why? Because you were going to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Even at your home, standing subhanAllah from place and you're going to pray. So this is the mentality of the hijrah as to be like an action for us if you just remind ourselves. The Al Imam Ahmed, rahimahullah ta'ala, he, he was said, someone came to him in the, in the problem when they have the crisis of the creation of the Qur'an, uh, someone told him, قَالَ أَلَا تَرَى أَنَّ الْحَقَّ قَدْ ظَهَرَ عَلَيْهِ الْبَاطِ Don't you see that the truth has been overcome by the, by the falsehood? It's like the truth is defeating here. So he told him, no, that's not true. قَالَ إِنَّ الْبَاطِلَ يظهر على الحق إذا انتقلت القلوب من الهدى إلى الظلام. This is very profound. He said, the falsehood will prevail, will prevail if the hearts turn from guidance to going astray. That's when it happened. That's when it happened. 
you don't regardless of what's happening around you regardless how many people they don't believe in Allah around you it's about you it's about you how much you love the truth back to that key and how much you defending the truth into yourself so as long as you have the truth established within yourself then you are good then you are fine then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is with you and he said in the end of his statement qala wa qulubuna ba'du lazima lil and our heart is still holding fast to the truth so when you have your heart hold fast to the truth you preserve that fitra that we were talking about last week you preserve that perception you preserve the companionship and the safeguarding of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for you and this is how the believer when you think of the hijra think how can you preserve and save yourself by not clinging to the air by making a constant and continuous hijra to Allah by repenting to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be the closer to him that's the best way how can we how we inshallah remember the hijra and you know that comes with it tranquility that comes with it joy and that comes with it support from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as we have read it in surah at-tawbah but may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bestow upon us the gift of the firmness and help ya Allah help us to expand our chest with the taqwa and descend on us the tranquility and help us ya Allah with the guidance and make us firm on the path of the guidance Allahumma ahdina ila siratika al-mustaqim ya arham al-rahimin Allahumma ja'anna min ibadika al-sabirin al-mutawakkilin Allahumma aghfil lana dhunubana ajma'in Allahumma atina fi dunya hasana wa fi al-akhirati hasana waqina adab al-nar wa akhiru da'wana anilhamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa aqim al-salata irhamukumullah